Good morning. Today we got a special guest on the show. Tracy Cleaver has been working at Barnfield for over eight years now. How are you feeling today then, Tracy? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. Oh, no problem. It's, we're glad to have you here today. So today we're going to be talking about your upbringing and education. Okay. So are you ready to begin? I am. This is your first question. How are you feeling? Yep, good, excited, interesting to see what you've got to ask me. Okay. A bit nervous. <laughs> okay, so you've been working at Barnfield for eight years now, is yes, that right? eight long years, yeah. So what made you become a teacher? Because I know that you've had no interest or intention yeah, it of was, being one. it was an interesting one because my intention was never to be a teacher. It was mm. never even really a consideration for a job that I wanted or something that I wanted to do. I was previously working at a production company, um, a lot of marketing stuff, adverts, logos, that kind of thing, and then they asked me to do a bit of private tutoring, like one-to-one, so teaching individuals how to edit, how to use the cameras, those kind of things, and then um, came to Barnfield as a technician. I was a technician for two weeks. Um, Someone in management had obviously heard about my teaching experience in the past and then pretty much straight away asked me if I would teach one of the one of the courses and then yeah here and we also are. you you studied at Barfield right you were a yes, student once as well many many years ago okay. yeah so the course that I teach on was also the course that I studied on yeah. which is interesting so I've seen it from both perspectives as a student and as a staff member um you said you also said that in the um in future, you want uh, um, to start your own family, is that correct? Yeah. So do you believe having you can have a career at the same time and start your own family? Do you think that's yeah, possible? Yeah, I believe that it is possible to do those two things. You have to juggle things and there's a lot of um, maybe sacrifices that you have okay. to make. But I feel that actually I've been teaching for so long. I would I, Now, after eight years being at Barnfield, I would consider myself as an established teacher. I would like to think that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, at some point in the near future, the next kind of aim is to start a family. Yeah. Um, You know your private tuition and um, starting here teaching more students, how do you feel about that? Is it like different? Um, It's very different in that when I was teaching privately, it was quite wealthy individuals who wanted to learn, say for example, learn how to edit privately. So it was a lot of one-to-one and it would be quite kind of intense. I could teach, spend two hours with that one person just teaching them how to use software and you were able to do that quite in depth. Whereas when you're teaching obviously in a college with large groups, I've often taught groups of students, 18, 19, 20 students at a time. So obviously it is very different. It's managing a class and managing lots of individual personalities and characters. And yeah, it is very, very different. Um, If you were to ask me which I enjoyed, both have their pros and cons. Um, I know now that in Barnfield you are teaching university students, is that right? Yes, so at Barnfield I teach the level twos, which is the college level. Mm. I also teach them the level four and the level five, which are the uni students. So you know your level twos and your level fours, what requires more work? Oh, good question. I would say the workload is very similar in terms of the amount of tasks that I'm doing but I would the, the tasks themselves are different so for example with the level twos it's a lot of behavior management because yeah. some students may not have got the best GCSEs some students may have been um, a little bit naughty say in school yeah. so it's a lot of behavior management which can take quite a bit of time whereas with the level fours and fives You don't have to do so much behaviour management, but because of the level of study, obviously the lessons are more intensive. So I would spend more time planning a level four or five lesson than I would, say, a level two lesson. But as I said, I don't have to do behaviour management with level fours because they are adults. They are choosing to be here. So... Yeah, and I so don't a lot have to more kind content of, for them. Yeah, a lot more content, a lot more theory, a lot more kind of, um, say, film theories and television analysis and all this kind of stuff. Whereas, yeah, I don't have to be phoning them up saying, 
why are you mm. late, where mm-hmm. are you, why aren't you in, whereas with level twos it is a lot more behaviour management. Mm. And in terms of your qualification, which one would you say was the hardest to achieve? Um, the de- my degree, so my degree is in film and television production, yeah. and yes, it was a challenge to achieve that. It was three years of studying at university level. Which was at East London. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I went to East London Uni, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. So whereas some people say university is a challenge, yeah. actually, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying a degree is a walk in the park, but if you enjoy your subject, it, it obviously is easier. So mm-hmm. I enjoyed doing my degree. Um, my teacher tra- sorry, teacher training qualification, which was a two-year qualification, mm-hmm. actually I found that more challenging because it's a very dry subject. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was also difficult is that I had already been teaching for a while before I did my teaching qualification. So with your teacher, you're sitting in lessons and they're teaching you how to teach, mm-hmm. even though you've already been teaching (laughs) so I found that to be a bit more of a struggle because as I've said it was quite dry yeah the lessons you were used to it yeah yeah. do you think over the years you're because you need skills do you think your skills have improved in which area like your teaching um I would say that your confidence grows Grows, with the more teaching you do your confidence grows I remember my kind of first couple of weeks at Barnfield Mm -hmm. as a teacher, not as a technician, and you are kind of standing at the front of a room in front, like in front of twenty teenagers, and you're expected to. It's a bit like putting on a show and putting on a performance. So definitely, as as the years go on, you just get more and more confident Mm -hmm. with doing it. Now, I wouldn't bat an eyelid about kind of standing up in front of a class of students and. Mm -hmm. You develop your skills, you develop your lessons and different activities that work and you often try things um, and things don't work. Yeah. But again, it's it's a learning curve. It's mm-hmm. seeing what works for one person might not work for another. So yeah, yeah, it just depends on the person, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I know that teaching is not easy and you're obviously stressed and frustrated. How do you deal with that? Oh, that's a good question. So everyone has good and bad days. Yeah. I would say that it's all about kind of trying to remain calm and if there has been a difficult day and a difficult student, Mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of target setting and you can become frustrated with individual students. So if a student shows up and you've reminded them five or six times to do the homework and they show up again and it isn't done, that is, it is frustrating, but you I often have to remind myself that actually all I can do is teach. And stay calm. Stay calm. I cannot do the work for the student. And keep nagging them. Yeah, I I don't like to use the word nagging because you don't want to come across as a nag. Some Mm. people do, actually, if you ask the students, they would probably say that, yes, I am a bit of a nag. But... (laughs) um, you have to just keep reminding yourself mm-hmm. that you can only do so much and you have to take a step back. And if the student isn't going to do the work, then that's their decision. Because it is their qualification at the end of the day. Absolutely. You've got yours. Yeah. That's what I would always say to myself. They need to get theirs. Yeah. yeah. So um, what inspired you to teach privately? Like, How come you went into that? Well, again, it wasn't really a consideration. I didn't go to this... So it was a production company that I worked for. I didn't go to that production company with the idea that I was going to be teaching privately. Mm-hmm. I went there, as I said, I was hired as a camera op, an editor. Like I said, I was doing a lot of promos, adverts, logos for some businesses. So you're quite big for the media world, aren't you? What do you mean by big? Like, you seem to know everything. You have had different experience in each sector of the media. Yeah, I would say that I've, I've done quite a few different... Yeah. I've worked in quite a few different areas of media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done some TV work, I've done some advertising work, work on short Shame films. I haven't seen you on TV, though. <laughs> Never in front of the camera. So mm-hmm. this is a rare opportunity for you that I've, I've <laughs> sitting in front of the camera. I guess we're lucky then to have you <laughs> on the show tonight. Okay, um, and you enjoy watching films because that's what you do in your spare time, isn't it? Absolutely love movies and going to the cinema and the, yeah. the film industry, love it. Yep. And what kind of genre genre of films do you like? Oh, 
horror. Horror Horror. and sci-fi, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're my... They're my biggest interests. Don't get me wrong, though. I do like things like drama. Drama, yeah. yeah. Um, you seem like the comedy type, so do you like comedy um, films? Not really. Um, I'm trying to think of a comedy. Again, so there's a, a horror comedy called Zombieland. Now, yeah. again, because that has horror elements in it, and it is a comedy I film, feel. I find that quite entertaining. But on the whole... Comedy's not really my thing. I definitely prefer something with a, a bit more of a serious storyline. I think line. you find it a bit stupid. <laughs> yeah, a bit And silly. it just reminds you of some of the students, doesn't it? Yeah, potentially. <laughs> so you're mentioning this, you've been to New York. What about have you ever had a consideration of teaching abroad? Oh, where would you go? No, I haven't really thought about it. I, I enjoy travelling. I enjoy going on holidays and long holidays and things like that. But teaching abroad, again... Never really, has never really been a consideration. Yeah. Yeah. That's not to say that I wouldn't in the future. Who knows what can happen? Yeah. Because you just have to grab every opportunity you get. Absolutely. Um. What advice would you offer to students who are like either turning into a media teacher or young students who are going into media? I would say make the most of the opportunities that are kind of put in front of you. That. It's not easy to get into the media industries. Um, It's a big field, but there are a lot of people who want to do it. I would say in the early days, be open to working long hours, sporadic hours. Obviously, with film and TV, it could be night shoots. It could be um, getting up at four in the morning and kind of going onto a film set and those kind of things. It's... That, yeah, that would be some advice that I would give, to be kind of open and willing to... Sorry, um, to be kind of, yeah, open and willing to the opportunities that are put in front of you. And network, a lot of networking. So when you work on one production, you're going to meet a team of people. Then that production will come to an end, but keep those contacts. Because those contacts are the people who can potentially show you or give you opportunities for further work in the future so a lot of networking is a recommendation as well when you first started on field who helped you out who did you find that was so it? this is something that not a lot of people know um so there's a tutor here called sarah jane when i was a student here sarah jane was one of my teachers she then um, we kept in touch um, as obviously I left the college and went into the working industry. I very much kept in touch with her. She then was the person who let me know about the technician's job that was available here. So she kind of dropped me a. So she basically thought you were capable of this job. Yeah. Was really supportive towards you. Absolutely. Which is very nice because I have not heard of a teacher saying to the students, "Oh, go for this job. I think you're up for it." Yeah. Think that's very nice of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was. She's been great. Always been very, very supportive. Wow. And um, over the years of teaching, do you think it's taken over your personal life and your teaching life? Like, how do you feel about it? I would say there is a. Lo- there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. Yeah. I think people look at teachers and think, oh, well, they get two weeks off at Christmas, they get really long summer holidays. It's not and as don't get me wrong, I love the holidays. The yeah. holidays are a perk. I mean who doesn't? I love getting out of bed late. Absolutely. Who doesn't love a lie in? But I think what people don't understand is that once your day finishes, so once you finish work at five mm-hmm. o'clock, I will go home and carry on working. Okay. Yeah, carry on working. It just never you've stops got, for you. You've got the next day's lessons to plan. You've got the marking to do. You've got schemes of work, lesson plans. So I, I always consider the fact that, yes, I do get five weeks off for the summer holidays. It's just not enough for you. But those five weeks, I think, are making up for the fact that I've gone home and worked every evening for three, four academic terms. Mm. Um, there is a lot of work, and you have to find that balance. The kind of one rule that I apply is no work on a Saturday. Saturday. That's you. Um, you do you stick to that rule or? Is I it do. Days? Yeah, I do try to because again, I know that. So typically, a Sunday, I will spend a good three or four hours working. Now that could be again marking, 
planning lessons, preparing PowerPoints. But the, the one rule is no work on a Saturday. Saturday. I was, I think, 13 when I got my first mobile phone. But it was, you could make calls on it. It was massive and it weighed a ton. Um, you could make calls on it and you could send a text message. But a text message was, I think you could have, like, let's say, 15 words in a text message and that was about it. And every text message cost you 10p or 12p or something like that. So it, having a mobile phone when I was young was an investment. So, um, yeah, I was lucky. I consider myself lucky to be in the generation that kind of skipped that, that pressure of social media. Um, at a young age, did you have any thoughts about leaving school or going no, into um, No, I think, again, it was... My parents were very encouraging of continuing your education and making them again making the most of that opportunity so myself and my brother were both very much encouraged to finish school and to go into college and then not my brother so much but I knew I wanted to carry that on and go to university and um, so yeah no education was always very much encouraged in our in our house so this is getting towards our end of our interview is there anything you would like to ask or say no, to I the audience great questions and again thank you for inviting me on thank you for being here because i know that you're not used to being on camera you've never been on camera you've gone into a lot of details i just like to say thank you and i hope this has some kind of benefit to the people out there to because they don't know what the future holds for them i hope it benefits them in some way and also gain a lot of experience the ones that are unsure on how to become a teacher or what what they look for i hope it benefits them so thank you tracy thank you very much and we'll see you next time on the show bye bye